Glistening in the morning sun, Fujiyama, sacred mountain of Japan, towers above the surrounding countryside. Along narrow paths through terraced rice fields nearby, children from the farming districts proceed on their way to school. With books and lunches packed in neat carrying cases, they pass through ripening tea fields where pickers are already at work. In villages along the coast, other children follow a path beside the boats and nets of the fishing fleets. While in the industrial cities, smoking factory chimneys line the road to school. Among the vast army of Japanese school children are Taro and Yukiko Yamada. At the doorway of their house, they put on their shoes, shoes never worn inside. Taro wears the official schoolboy uniform. Sister Yukiko wears the standard dress for girls. While father completes the lacing of his shoes, grandmother Yamada tends baby brother Bochan as he finishes his breakfast. Bochan likes the tea that is always a part of Japanese meals, but grandmother feels it must be cooled. Now father and children say goodbye to mother. Father and Taro and Yukiko start out together, for father works not far away. For a short distance, they pass along a street lined with craftsmen's shops. Just ahead, many people, some in Oriental and some in Western dress, have errands at the post office. The Yamadas have an errand here too. Taro goes to mail a letter, while father and Yukiko wait outside, watching the traffic on the busy street. Presently, as Taro rejoins them, they move on, and soon they arrive at a railway station where father is the official in charge. Here, father and children say goodbye to each other. As father enters his office, the tracks outside are already busy. A call for a report. At school, it is almost time for classes to begin. Children flock through the gates and teachers stand ready. Greetings are exchanged. Before entering the classroom, all the children remove their street shoes. Here, as at home, shoes are always left at the entrance. Inside the classroom, the children take their places and prepare for work. Meanwhile, in cupboards near the door, each pair of shoes is also in its proper place. And now a reading lesson. Later in the morning, at the Yamada home, the maid buys tofu from a street vendor. Tofu, or bean curd, comes from soybeans and is tasty in soups. In the main living room of the Yamada home, Mother attends to one of the most important of Japanese household tasks, skillful flower arrangement, an art highly honored in Japan. Grandmother is occupied with needlework on a new kimono, while Bochan plays with his toys. Mother just finishes placing flowers before the family's ancestral shrine, when suddenly, in the distance, the whistle of the Tokyo Express. Once more, father will be able to report that the train is on time, for the express is almost always exactly on schedule. During the brief pause in the station, the engineer oils his locomotive. 
And presently, father is again at his desk, preparing a record of train movements. He writes the Japanese characters easily and quickly, but in Taro's and Yukiko's class in school, the children are just learning how to write. It is not easy when you are only beginning. Yukiko writes slowly and carefully. Taro, too, is still very cautious, but he handles the brush well as he completes the last character of the name for Japan. From top to bottom, it reads, Dai Ni Pon, meaning Great Sun's Origin, or as we say, Japan. Later, Taro wields a bat with even greater skill in the American game of baseball. Nearby, older boys practice fencing as a part of their physical training. Today, Yukiko puts aside her school dress for a fine silk kimono. She and brother Taro are going to a festival. This is an excursion in which the entire family joins. All look forward to seeing the cherry blossoms, and there will be many other attractions for young and old. Even as the Yamadas are leaving home for the day's outing, other families are already assembling at the scene of the festival. Cherry blossoms are everywhere, framing bridges, and here a castle of old Japan. Among the places visited by many of those who have gathered for the festival is a small shrine, one of thousands of such religious structures to be found in Japan. On their arrival, the Yamadas stop to worship. First, Taro pulls the bell cord, then offerings are tossed into a box by all members of the family. They do not enter the shrine interior, but remain at the entrance. Clapping their hands as a sign of their presence, they bow in reverent silence before leaving. Now to enjoy the cherry blossoms, so beloved by the people of Japan. As with so many Japanese, father's hobby is photography. He is anxious to get pictures of the delicate blossoms which last for only a few days each year. Another popular feature of the festival is a storyteller. So the day passes with enjoyable activities for all. But for Taro and Yukiko, and Mother too, the outing is not complete without seafoam candy. Back home, after their day at the festival, the Yamadas have keen appetites. Dinner includes meat, raw fish, a variety of cooked vegetables, and steamed rice in individual bowls, all eaten with chopsticks. The rice bowls are usually refilled at least once, and perhaps oftener, especially when everyone is hungry. In the kitchen, the maid keeps a careful watch on the rice steamer in case more should be needed. But now she remembers another duty she must attend to. It is time to put more coal on the fire that is already burning in a heating chamber directly beneath the household bath. The hot bath is a daily habit with the Japanese. Tonight, Taro will bathe first, but everyone will have a turn. Far from being afraid of soap, he lathers himself long and vigorously. Next, he dips water from the tub for a thorough rinsing. Washing and rinsing are done outside the tub, which is designed for the final restful soaking. In the living room, mother and the maid make up beds on the spotless floor, while father, dressed in a comfortable kimono, quietly reads the evening paper. It is getting late, and already in another part of the house, the children are asleep, Bo-chan still clutching his toy dog. Taro, perhaps reliving the day at the festival, 
Yukiko resting before tomorrow's return to school. The Yamada home and garden lose their outlines in the darkness of night, while distant Fujiyama looms majestic against the sky.